Now in this part of the question, we're told that Shivani buys six planks, each of length 100 centimeters. And we've got to find the probability that fewer than two of Shivani's planks contain at most three defects. Now to understand a problem like this, I imagine a tree diagram, something like this, where I've got my first plank, second plank, third plank, etc., all the way down to the sixth plank. And when I look at the first plank, or any of these planks for that matter, what can happen? You can either get more than or... Now when you look at any one of these planks, what can happen? Well, you can either get less than or equal to three defects, or you can get more than three defects. Now in the previous part of the question, we worked out that if we had a plank that was 100 centimeters long, and we looked at the random variable x as the number of defects per 100 centimeters, we worked out the probability x was less than or equal to 3 to be 0.2650. So I can put this probability in here as being 0.2650. And the probability being more than 3 must be 1 minus 0 0.2650. And that comes to 0 0.7350. OK? Now this is going to be the same for each plank. And the probabilities would remain constant and independent of one another. And because we've got a fixed number of trials, 6 in this case, we can think of this as being a binomial model and binomial distribution. And that's the background to doing this problem. What we can say is define a new random variable. Let's say we call it y. Let y be the random variable, number of planks with at most three defects. So where y follows a binomial distribution, n, the number of trials is 6, the number of sections we got here, and the probability of getting at most three defects is 0.2650. So when it comes to this question, we're asked to find the probability that there are fewer than two planks that have at most three defects. We're looking for the probability then of y being less than or equal to 1. That would be fewer than two defects. So to work this out, remember that if you've got a binomial model, I've called it x as the random variable because this is what you'll generally see in most tables, that if x follows a binomial distribution, np, probability x equals r is equal to ncr, p to the power r, q to the power n minus r, where q is 1 minus p. If you're unsure of this, just go on my website and look at the tutorials for the binomial distribution. So for the probability that y is less than or equal to 1, that's going to be the same as the probability that y equals 0 plus the probability that y equals 1. And we can use the formula now to work out what these two probabilities are going to be. So if we work these probabilities out through the formula, for the probability that y equals 0, it's going to be 6c0. And then the probability of success, which is 0 0.2650, that's going to be to the power 0. And then you've got failure, which is 1 minus p, which we said here was 0 0.7350. I'm just going to put it as 0 0.735 though, just to save a bit of space. And that's to the power 6. So that's the probability that y equals 0. We now have to add it to the probability that y equals 1. So it's going to be 6c1. Probability of success, 0 0.2650. That's to the power r. And r in this case was the 1. So you have that to 1, and you've got probability of failure, 0 0.735, and that is to the power n minus 
r here, n minus 1, 6 minus 1, which is the power 5. Okay, so just get on your calculator, work that out, and you end up with 0.49872 and so on. And let's say we round that to three significant figures. That's going to be 0.499 to 3SF, three significant figures. Okay.